It's your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Welcome back. This is Espresso on S3, and I have a recipe for you, something special. Now, if you've always wanted to try your hand at a snook, I know it can be intimidating. There is a chance for you, thanks to Chef Clem's recipe. It's bursting with flavor, and he throws in a spectacular charred sweet potato salad as well that's going to make everybody come back to your house, even though you don't want them there. That's how good this recipe is. It happens to the best of us. Chef Clem! Hello. Don't you want people at your house? The thing, you know, COVID and stuff, you know? So okay. People, so if you cook too well, they're like, hi, Carl, you want to... And then like, you that guy. And then they arrive with rolls. Uh, and then they think that's No, okay. they arrive with a pack of sausage, man. And I'm just like, look, I, I'm bringing out snook here, quality that Chef Clem taught me. And you're coming here with like, now nah, i got sausage. And the great thing about the sausage that they bring along, eh? It's not thawed yet. It's frozen. Frozen. So they can take it home again. Yes. Oh, Just you're telling like, you. Okay, who, who's on? Who's on? Who's on? Where's the camera? Where's the camera? Where's there, the camera? There, there. Is it you? It's there. Do you do that? <laughs> Is it... Tell them. Just I, tell I, them, Chef Clip. No. Thank no, you. No. Don't tell be them. that person. Don't do okay. that. Okay, right. I'm Let's ready. do this. I love this recipe. Because people are intimidated by cooking seafood anytime on a bride. But can we ask first and foremost, the reason as to why there's intimidation is the reason is because if I look at a snook, the skin of the snook is the biggest problem. For me, if you're gonna hit the coals too hot, that skin is gonna stick and then you're gonna have the crumbly snook to, to serve to your guests. And often you mask it by putting it onto like a nice board and then putting a dip there. However, there is a way. Chef there is M a way. Has said that there is actually a way. Okay. Take me through it. So if you wrap your snook in something that's not likely to stick to the grill, yes. you're winning. So I'm like, okay, cool. You can wrap it in a bag and then put it on the bride, but it's not going to get the flavor. No, you How want How about to... you wrap it in some pancetta? Are you saying that you can wrap... I can't wrap. ...a snook in pancetta? But you can pancetta. wrap a snook in pancetta. No, I'm just saying that if you want to make something better, you actually look at this thing, it's called pancetta. And I know that you may not even put this in a book, but when I have a look, I'm gonna say it's snook. So that's basically how you wrap a snook. I like how everybody's just quiet. I they know. They don't, they don't, can you not clap for no, them? No, that's fine, I'm, I'm okay, no, it's fine. I don't, uh, need, I don't need to clap, thank it's, you it's for, fine. Thank you, thank you. I don't need, I don't need clap, I don't need clap, it just, just calm down. Reba, have a seat. He said wrap snook. Do you know we talk so like much, eh? We haven't even like done a single bit of cooking yet. But, go. okay, let's go. Do it. So we're doing snook. And the thing, like you said, snook, the skin is notoriously sticky. It's stu stuck to your grill and then it's a whole mess. Yes. The, the flesh is delicate as well, okay? So it ends up like getting destroyed and then you, what do you do? Fricadals with it. Okay, but, we're but not that's gonna do the that. thing, you know? And I feel like that this has been a massive problem. Now, if I look at my, let's just say every family's got their own bride culture, what's been happening is that usually what happens is somebody will put the snook on the bride when the coals are too hot oh. and it gets too crumbly and next thing you know they're like maybe get a spatula quickly and then they're scraping this thing panic. off there and there's a there's lot of panic, panic and then they're dropping it and there's almost a bowl of snook and you're like wasn't that a whole snook so you, I mean, you keep the hole throw away the bowl that's the thing that's you know, the, the thing. whole snook is okay. important right whole snook you know we do apricot or, or peach jam yes right? but we know that citrus goes really well with seafood i right? love citrus so seafood. why not use a citrus medley jam so that's we're replacing that first okay i've actually seen the citrus medley jam in woolworths absolutely that's the, what you get the one that i think is just and okay so now this part of it for those who have never experienced the snook with the jam that we grew up with uh -huh. there is a lot of okay there's, Go for it. i could have handed that to you now no but i'm I like here you, hey? talk. you talk with your hands it's expressive that's, people want to see that it's just it's fine but the the jam itself because snook itself Yes. Flavor-wise, it doesn't have a lot of the, the flavor to it unless you work with it and slow it down and you actually focus on the flavor. This is probably why for so many years we've been packing flavor in right. to our right. filleted snook on the bride. Absolutely. Okay. It just absorbs flavor. That's why we like it on the bride because it absorbs the smoke so well. Yes. And then anything else you add to it, just... just... Okay, and, so. and I think another thing is also the jam is there for moisture because one thing that this thing, this fish does is that it just gets dry if you're not careful. With a dry snook. And this is where the intimidation comes that. in. It's the skin and it's the dryness and how to manage those things. Now, with you putting citrus on there, this is magic, right? Right. So you, you, we're going to encase the snook in the pancetta. So you're kind of creating a capsule, okay? Right. It goes into the bry. There's a lot of moisture now. We've added the jam, we've added the citrus. Yes. That's going to start steaming. We're gonna steam the snook from the inside, getting the smokiness on the outside. It's how you do it. Okay, so also, this, this, this is the lightly smoked snook from Woolies. Yes. Sustainability first. We track it from line to dine. We know where it's been. We know it's gonna end up in your belly. So, it's sustainable. And again, we're talking about seafood a lot this week. Sustainability first.
Before Absolutely. you say seafood, you've got to say sustainability. It's, it's a big thing for me. I've watched the documentaries. I'm very yeah. open to uh, those types of things and those types of sanctions and, and all of the, the labels that you'll find in the packaging you'll find at Woolworths. I, I know that. I look for it, and this is great. But now the wrapping part is the delicate part, and I think there could be a little skill here. So I'm going to shut up okay. and pay attention. I'm going to start on this and start separating these little rashes of okay. pancetta. What do you want me to do? Can I do something for you I've while we're waiting? I've got some potato that I charred on the braai. Great. No, the rain came down. I know we nowhere. were going to be outside. I'm sorry. Okay, so the rain came down, but luckily we were able to char our sweet potatoes before it came down. Okay. So sweet potatoes, we, we like sweet potatoes and stick together. Love. But we're going to make it a bit herby. You got some dill, you got some chives, you got some Dijon, whole grain mustard. You got some honey, mm. because it's delicious. And then you got some garlic, pepper, olive oil. Can you mix it all together for me? And then dress your sweet potato. Is that, is that all? That's, that's it. it. I'm just that's mixing it. it. That's I also it. have some citrus over here. You want me to drop that in as well while we're you doing can, that? You, you could microplane it. We don't need it. But just half, squeeze in the juice. Okay, okay cool. So all I'm you want to do, roll it I prefer first. doing it from the larger side down to the tail. All right. Just, you, know, you can see where that cavity is it's over there. So just like aiming for that. And all you want to do is just tuck. Andrew, you want to watch in. this. I want to do this, but I want to watch this because this is something that I, I might just try this weekend. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's a great way to like not have a fish catch on your braai, but it also adds a most amazing flavor. So what I've also seen you doing there, Chef, is that you're also adding extra smokiness, because pancetta naturally is smoked as well, so... And it, yeah, it, you know, you know. This and is great. You know what goes really well with smoke? Sweetness. And we've added that sweetness in there by the jam. So this is just like a flavor sensory explosion. It is indeed. Oh, I, I, can, I can tell that it's, it's something that you have to try because of those flavors. I mean, already, if, you've, if I was watching us right now, Yes. I would dry in the morning, like I'd be okay with it. Why not? Because I'd give it a shot this morning. Right now. That's the great Absolutely. thing about it. Absolutely. Okay. So what you want to do is you actually want to, you see the little bit, bits of gaps? Yes. Once I've done this now, so I've, I've secured it. Now right. I can go in with other brushes and start filling up those gaps. You'll also notice if you make this on the braai, and you, like by the time you're done, you're like, where's my pancetta? It's gone. It yes. Actually, it actually melts into the skin of the snook. So your guests will actually never know that there's pancetta on your snook. You? Carl! That's a very serious look, the way you like stir in that bowl, eh? I just want to make sure that it's, it's, a, good, it's wow. be a good coating, wow. man. Wow, I've never Come seen you so serious. Okay. I just, I, I'm very serious about food. <laughs> when the way this is going, okay. I want to try this. So, Carl. Great. Okay, talk to me. Here's the thing. Imagine this is a fire. It just, guys, work with me because, we, like I said, we were supposed to be outside. Okay, we all fantasize. Your hand, hold your hand about 30 centimeters above the fire, okay? Yep. If you can count to three before it gets too hot and uncomfortable. So you got one, two, three, okay? Pull away. Yeah. It's too hot for your snook, but that's a good temperature for your steaks. Yes. Your steaks on that. So what you're looking for is a four count. If you can count one, two, three, four, and then it gets too hot, that's a perfect temperature you want for your snook. You don't want to overdo it. I love you don't it. Wanna, you want to spend too much time cooking your snook because it will dry out. So that four count is exactly what you're looking for. Call. Cool. Okay. I'm this ready. This goes down. If you are doing it inside, understand? Yeah. What I do is I suspend it on a wire rack and then put it down on the roasting tray, so the air can circulate between the fish as it cooks. Okay, call. Done. 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 Finished. finished. Done, done, finished. That's finished. what it is. There's no need to braai for five hours. You can leave your guests sitting there like, no, this is a quick one. This is how you do it. That's... You can still have your five hour braai. That's Just great. start with this first. You know what, this is, it's beautiful. It is sensational. Chef Klim as per normal. The man is a genius, as you know. So if you want to wrap your snook, I suggest you do it with pancetta. It makes things a whole lot better. And if you want to let your food say, hey, all you have to do is go to woolworths.co.za. You. Drops Mike and snook.